What up, people? This is Sweep the Rack podcast for the people. Rob, say what's up. What's good, peeps? Uh, we got some clips here for you, people. Uh, some of the best parts of our various shows that we've put out. So uh, enjoy the clip here, and uh, we'll catch you on the other side to wrap up. Action ball is a huge part of it, of course. Yeah, and it, it's not it's not what it was at one time. We all know that, right? No. But there are some great characters and great stories there. And, yeah, like, listen, if you haven't heard this story, you're in for a treat. But Joe Stillman has one of the best action stories ever told. I mean, Joe was at the center. He was directly, he was the guy that was involved in one of the best action stories ever told. So Rob and I are going to summarize the story a bit. And then, Joe, we're just going to ask you to tell the story from your perspective and, and kind of give no people problem. a run. And then, and then we may come back with you and ask you some questions, but we'll start there. So, Rob, to you and I, and I think to a lot of people, the legend of this story is just known as the 710 bet. Yes? Yes, I was there. So, personally, I'm happy and honored and humbled to say I was there to witness this. Yeah, so the story is known as the 710 bet. And, you know, again, we're going to go to Joe to hear the story, and Rob was there so he can chime in. But generally how the story goes is that uh, it was the hoinky, and – there's always action at that tournament, and somehow, and we'll hear later, someone came up with a bet to shoot the 710. And, and Stillman, he threw it a million miles an hour even before, before that was everyone, but he threw it a million miles an hour, and he, he always had a good chance to make the 710. So they came up with odds, and he took the bet to make the 710. I, how many was it, Joe? It was, there, was, there was a well, ratio. Yes. Yeah, the yeah, the, uh, the over-under was three and a half. Three was a loss. Four was a win. So I had to make four out of 100 tries to win the bet. Four, four out of 100. Okay. So that kind of sets the story. All right. I know a little bit that I was not there, but I know that Timmy Mack was involved in this action. Oh, yeah. I know that, yes, that he was, he was, he was kind of at the center of it, so I'm sure we'll hear a little bit. Uh, Rob, anything you want to chime in with before we pass it over to Joe and let him give us his rundown of the story? I know I'm I'm ready for Joe to tell the story because it was just it's for, he's going to tell it a lot record, better than I'm going to tell. For the record, for the record, Rob did not bet on me. The bet was open. Rob did not put the wager on me. Let that be known. Yeah, this, this guy, this guy still bet on me. He did bet not on him and who didn't. Damn. Damn. All right, Joe. Uh, Joe I, didn't bet ag- I didn't bet against him either, though. I didn't bet against him either. That's, no, I, I, hope hope you I hope you wouldn't. I hope you wouldn't. We're family. Correct? Let, let, <laughs> let that be clear. All right. So, Joe, go ahead. Bless our listeners, man. Tell, tell the story right, of well, one of the greatest action stories in bowling, the story of the 710 bet. It was a cold, brisk night on a Thanksgiving in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> anyway. That's <laughs> perfect. perfect. It was, well, it was freezing because I, I was wearing shorts. It didn't matter because I'm fat. But anyway, go, let's go. Let's get to the point. So anyway, there was a bookie, a local bookie in Cincinnati. He, he came up to me and said to me, I was in the bar having an adult cocktail or two or seven. And he said to me, Joe, he's like, I heard that uh, you've shot 710 for money before. I said, I have. He's like, you know, you probably you can't bounce it out here. Now, earlier that day during the sweeper, I had watched uh, Derwin Petrie, a great amateur bowler on Storm Staff, shoot the 7-9. He's a righty, but he shoot the 7-9 on lanes 9 and 10. And he shot the 7-9, shooting the 7-pin, and I watched the pin just fly out of the back. So when this bookie said to me, you know, why don't you do it here? He goes, you can't bounce him out here. I said, yes, I can. He's like, well, you can bet anything up to 10000 I'll cover it. He goes, and, what's, he goes, and I'll, give you, I'll give you six to five on your money, and you can, you can pick. I said, I'll, I said, I'll do it as long as I can pick the pair. He said, no problem. So, of course, I picked the pair that I already had some inside information on. So I went to the bathroom. I come back out. And it was literally like a PBA telecast. The Rob was out for this. It was people sitting, standing in the back, sitting. They were the Hoinky family was sitting on the lanes. There were more people. It was just like watching a PBA telecast. That's how many people were there watching. Because the bleachers, they had bleachers set up like for the Hoinky during the week. It was crazy. It was insane. A lot of people there. So Rob, I Rob, told him I need. Hold on, hold on. Take Go. take take a second. Rob, set the scene for us. Sunday at the Masters, Tiger Woods running up to eighteen. Green. And that's what it felt like. It was people, wall to wall people. It was it was craziness. It was it, it makes Bayside Ball Maine look like a freaking kid's birthday party. Looks like church. So so here's my question thus far. 
How did okay. like you know, it seems like the way you tell the story, like you know, you you were in the bar and then two seconds later you were out on the lanes. Did any time well, yeah. pass in between? No, I, I, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to that right now. You're gonna hear. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the story. As when I tell the story to people, I usually you know summarize it in thirty seconds. I'm gonna give you literally the whole breakdown of how everything played All out. Right, good, and everything. Go, go. go ahead. All right. So I told him I need ten minutes of practice. So I go up there. I go up there, and I throw two shots up the middle of the lane with my storm golf ball. I'm like, I'm ready. So like, you said you need 10 minutes. I'm like, I need two shots. I thought, I'm good. I'm ready to go. And then, like I said, I've had a few cocktails, so I was a little loose and warm and ready to go. So now I'm like, all right, who's betting on me? So I, I bet 500 myself. Um, I, I know Bill was there. I, I, Rob, I think your brother might have put 100 on me. I, don't, I know you didn't, but I know I think Dave did. Um, Dave's always in for the action. Yeah. So now the bet. So we're having $900. All of a sudden, out of the back, Tim Mack comes up and goes, I want to bet 100 on you, too. Now, for everybody who in the bowling community knows Tim Mack, this is the guy who puts $100 in a slot machine and wins 25000 every time he goes to Vegas. He is the luck box of all luck boxes. So once Timmy bet 100 on me, I knew there was no chance I could lose. So I told him the bet's 1000 They said, all right, we're going to we're, we're laying $1,200 to my 1000 We put all the money in the Seteria. And now before I had a chance to throw my first shot, people are open bowl. Now, remember, there's open, now, Mike, too. There's open bowls on lanes 11 and 12. Open bowls on seven, eight. There's open bowls all around me. The family next to me said, "Hey, are you trying to see seven, ten for money?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "I want to bet." I'm like, "Yo, you want to bet on me? Sure." He goes, "No, I want to bet against you." And people are coming up to me, "Just want to bet against me?" I could have booked, I could have booked a hundred thousand in bets that night, but I only had, we only bet a thousand to win twelve hundred. So I start setting them up on lane nine. I get up there, Mike, and I make the very first one out of the gate, and this place went crazy, like Tiger Woods winning oh. at Masters. It was unbelievable. The place went absolutely nuts. People are saying, oh, he can't make it, he can't do it, and I need the first one out of the gate. He makes the first oh, one. Should, oh, God. Mike, oh, you should have saw how fast I was trying to get my bet in after that. I was, I was like, what the oh, fuck? I was like, I missed, I can't believe I missed this bet. I was, so yeah. I make, so after that, I keep shooting it. I'm, get, I'm getting close. I'm wrapping around. So I make the second one on the 22nd one. I make the third one on the 33rd shot. Uh, on the 62nd one and 63rd one, I hit. I literally send the pin across the deck, but it just misses the ten. So now I go up there after sixty-seven tries, and I tell. I literally turn around to the crowd and said, "The last time I did this bet, I made it. I made my the winning one on the sixty-eighth try. So I'm gonna shoot this one. I'm gonna make it, and I'm going to bed." And sure enough, I stepped up. I let go of the ball and off my hands. I knew I made it. The seven pin never hit the deck. It hit the ten pin in the air, and we went absolutely nuts. Tim back. Tim Mack, being the football player he is, picked me up in the air. They were jumping on me like I just won the World Series. It was the most epic moment of my bowling career ever. Better than better than shoot my first 300, 800. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care, I don't care if I, win a, I would have won a PBA title. That moment was the most epic thing ever. It was unbelievable. I, can, I couldn't believe Tim Mack had me in the air. And wait, and the best part of that is, so after we start celebrating, whatever, I have to go to the bathroom. I go in the bathroom, and as I walk in the bathroom, there's somebody in the stall on a cell phone. He goes, you, he's like talking to his friend. He goes, you wouldn't believe this. I saw this big fucking gorilla from New York shooting seven tens. It was the most unbelievable thing. He was like he was throwing a baseball. He was so huge. He was like King Kong throwing the bowling ball. And he opens the bathroom stall and sees me. Holy shit, the gorilla's in front of me. The gorilla's in front of me. It was so great. He didn't know what to say. It was oh, great. No. I didn't know what to say. I just started laughing. I'm like, it's okay, I'm a gorilla. Tell me what you want. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Like I said, I, I never thought I'd have a greater moment in my bowling career than that. So and I've, had some, here, and I've had some pretty big accomplishments, but that's still number one. So, so my question, I mean, that's, you know, this is, this is like t- classic, right? I mean, you know, so that's my question is like, how did word spread? And, and Rob, you may be able to answer this as well. How did word spread about the bet being made? And, and this is what was going to happen. Like, how did word spread throughout the bowling alley so quickly? Oh, I mean, because everybody after, if you've ever been to the Super Hoinky when it was at his prime, everybody is, like, looking for some kind of action after the tournament. So, like, and, you know, Chris Viali has his crew there, and uh, they were involved in a lot of it, and we just, I mean, everybody, once word gets out that someone might do something or bowl somebody, I mean, it's literally like wildfire. 
And not to mention, okay. right, number one, it's, it's, it's Cincinnati, so there's not a lot to do. Number two, it's Thanksgiving night, so it's even less to do. There's nowhere else to go. No one's open. So everybody was just hanging out at the bowling alley. So once they said, well, you know, people bowling a match is one thing, but once people heard I was going to shoot 710s, you know, whether I did it or not, people were like, you know what, that's a pretty rare thing to watch. Let me go watch this kid do this. And like I said, I couldn't believe how many people stayed there to watch. They were sitting on the, they were sitting on the ball returns. On the, it was unbelievable. Like I said, it was like a PVA telecast, the amount of people that were there sitting there watching. Yeah, amazing. And so, do you know, Joe? If now the thousand dollars that you guys bet was that the only money bet on it, or no. was there other? No, I mean, look, listen. If I if, if I had a dollar for every person who told me they won money betting on me and in, in, on the seven tens, I'd be able to retire right now. I mean, everybody told, oh, I made bet on you, but I'll tell you one thing: there was a side bet on how many seven pins out of the hundred I would miss. And I think the over under was like fifteen and a half or eighteen and a half. And I have the 68 because I think Mark Massey was keeping track. I think I missed six, seven pins out of 68 tries. Now, I mean, mm-hmm. the fact that I was throwing the ball 30 plus miles an hour is pretty incredible. That I only missed six of them the whole time. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you were you you, you were a very talented bowler at at, at that time. And uh, no, I know that. Listen, I always made my seven pins, but it's not that I'm saying. But now I'm trying to throw the ball with all my might every shot. Next, uh, of course, not to mention the next morning when the when the Mikey started <laughs> my first frame of my first round match. I was a seven ten, and everybody started hysterical laughing. <laughs> I know I didn't make it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So yeah, the story of the seven ten bet. Uh, you know, one of the one of the best action stories I I've ever heard. You know, definitely top five. And and you know, Rob, you and I have been around. So uh, you know, one of the more amazing things now. What's amazing to me is that that wasn't the first time you took that bet. How, no. how many other times had you taken that bet? I had did the first time I did it was at Country Lanes, and at Country Lanes they pins do bounce there, not not ridiculously, but they bounce a lot. And I had to make five out of a hundred there because they knew the pins bounce a lot more there. And I made mean, the best one about that was when I started shooting them. Also, it's funny I did it on nine and ten at Country, same 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 number of lanes, just coincidence. I didn't make the first one, but I made the second one. I made the third one. I missed the fourth one and made the fifth one. So I was three for my first five. When I was shooting the bet, the guy was ready to, the guy was ready to pay me after five shots. I made three wow. out of the first five when I did it that day. Amazing. And, but it ended up taking me 68 tries. But, but that, that's why the number was so important. That's why in the Winky was so amazing when I called the shot like Babe Ruth in the World Series. It was awesome. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed that clip. Uh, Mike and Rob just wrapping up for you here. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And obviously, Rob, they want to give us a follow on social media, too. Yes, sir. Sweep the Rack at, on Twitter, Sweep the Rack on Instagram, and Sweep the Rack Bowling Podcast on YouTube. If you want to reach out to us as well, hit us up, Sweep the Rack at Gmail. Have a good one, guys. Peace.